called a uh, regular meeting of the board of April 18th to order. I'd first like to acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional land of the Saudi and Ojibwe Nation, which is represented by the communities of Saudi First Nation and Chippewas of Maywash, unceded First Nation. We also think things of the Métis Nation of Ontario whose history and people are well represented in the Simpson Gray Council. Uh, we have not received any regrets because we're all here. Uh, for the moment of reflection tonight, this is National Volunteer Week, April 16th to 22. Volunteering leaves us together is this year's theme. To quote the organization Volunteer Canada, through volunteering we experienced our interconnectedness, making our lives more meaningful. Getting involved in various ways we find friendship, develop trust, and link our relationships. Threading these connections, we come to belong as we contribute towards the same goals. Our Blue Water District School Board volunteers fulfill many different roles, but are all interconnected and working towards the same goals of student success and well-being. I can think of many individuals within my school area who donate their time and effort for the betterment of school of students as I am sure is the case for all trustees around this table. We have heard about volunteers who help with nutrition programs. There are school councils, school board committees with parent and community representations, school events, trips, athletics, learning programs, and extracurricular activities are other examples from a long list of initiatives that are supported by caring and selfless volunteers. For our moment of reflection, I ask you to join me to share thanks and appreciation for our volunteers in Blue Water District School Board. They are a common thread in the fabric of our school communities through their generous contributions that help to foster a positive learning environment and growth opportunities for our students. the uh, approval of the agenda. I'd like a mover and seconder that the agenda for the regular meeting of the board of April 18th, 2023 be approved as printed. Uh, Trustee Morgan, Trustee Roots. We'll add um, and add that under D2 when we're in the communications and announcements in that section. Um, so it was moved by Trustee Morgan, seconded by Trustee Lutz, that the agenda for the regular meeting of the board of April 18, 2023, be approved as printed. All in favor? Thank you, that is carried. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest on any of the items on our agenda this evening? I see none. Uh, we have two sets of minutes to approve. Uh, we'll need a mover and seconder for each of them. First, that the minutes of the regular meeting of the board of March 21st, 2023 be approved as printer. Could I have a mover? Trustee Craig, seconded by Trustee Atkinson. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Thank you, that is carried. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I raised my hand too much and I'm close to that. Oh, and I'd like to be noted in the box in case. Second set of minutes that the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Board meeting of April 4, 2023, be approved as printed. Trustee McComb, Trustee Lutz, any errors or 
other omissions? I see none. All in favor? Opposed? Uh, is there any business arising from the minutes today? I see none. And we are to our Excellence in Education, Oral Communication 2023. Uh, I would like to invite Superintendent of Education, Colonel Lipset, and Superintendent Lafay to the front. And while they're getting settled, uh, we'll need a mover and second here to put this motion on the floor. Uh, that the Blue Water District School Board receive the oral communication 2023 report for information. Trustee Boots and Trustee Craig, welcome. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> good evening and thank you very much. I'm very pleased uh, to bring this report tonight. You can see that we have some guests with us. So this is very exciting. Uh, we are going to be sharing with you some speeches from the, around the district. So. I am going to turn it over uh, to Wendy Bowers, the Learning Services Administrator, to introduce um, some of our guests, and then um, Superintendent Lafay will come up after to uh, introduce the next portion. <coughs> but what we're going to be sharing with you today is uh, some speech winners from the Agriculture Society speeches from Gray and Bruce County, and then uh, uh, a speaker from Concours who uh, placed in first place. So we have some exciting speeches to share. And I'm going to turn it over to Wendy. And have you tested this height? student at Holland Chatsworth Central School in Chatsworth. She was awarded first place in the junior division for the Federation of Agriculture Speech Competition, and she is going to share a speech with us tonight about her friend. Have you ever had a friend who makes you feel so good about yourself? They just get you and understand you better than others. Well, I do, and she's somebody I trust and always feel happy around. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable school board members, and my dear principal, today I'm going to tell you about my very first friend, Ainsley. Ainsley is more like a sister than just my BFF. Whenever we hang out, she always makes me laugh and feels safe to talk about anything. I first met her in kindergarten, and we just connected. I tripped, and she helped me up, and then we started talking. Right then, I knew we were going to be good friends. Ainsley is the kindest and sweetest person I know. She's always stood up for me when I was being bullied. She cares about my feelings and makes sure I am heard when I have something to say. We don't go to school together anymore, and I remember the day she told me she was moving. I came home and cried my eyes out. I was afraid I was never going to see her again. I thought that if we didn't see each other at school, we wouldn't be able to stay friends. There's one song that always makes me think of her. It's called Slipped Away by Abba Levine. Every time I listen to it, I get sad and want to start crying. The song talks about someone she loved but had to move very far away. You see, I can want friendships to be broken. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Every birthday party, she was there, and we still had plays at each other's houses. Our parents made sure of that. I get to talk with her and kids messenger if we can't see each other in person. Even though we don't get to see each other as much, when we finally do get together, we get so excited. This has made me realize that our friendship is very strong. It's like two million pounds of duct tape and gorilla glue stuck together. You can never pull us apart. No matter how long it takes for us to see each other, we always find a way, and it feels like nothing's changed at all. 
Why are we such good friends? Well, sometimes it's almost like we're the same person. We both love blueberries, bunnies, and fluffy blankets and pillows. We even have some of the same stuffed animals. One of them is a knitted squid with googly eyes. I call my Ainsley and she calls her Tolly. But my parents call them Squanky and Squally. They think that's funny, but I think they're disrespecting us. <laughs> Ainsley and I have been best friends for six years. We've always been there for each other, and we always will be. Hey, now that you know more about my friend, would you want to be friends with her? If you have a friend like mine, you should tell them how much you appreciate them. Thank you for listening to my speech.
loaves of bread a year. Guess how many loaves of bread come from one acre of wheat? 3,330. Wow, that's a lot. This coming year, on our farm, we will grow 40 acres of wheat. That is 133,000 loaves of bread, or enough to support 2,200 families. I help on the farm. I'm going to drive tractors and take care of the animals. But when I look around and watch my dad, he sure needs to know a lot of things. There's caring for the animals and making sure he can help them if they've had a baby or if they're sick. Then there's days when he needs to grab equipment, and if something breaks, fix it. And of course, there's always lots of paperwork, so that takes a long time. Some days school is planned, and others do not. Since I was little, we have learned about the danger areas on our farm. Farming is one of the most dangerous jobs, with approximately 85 deaths per year involving farm-related accidents in Canada. It is important, when you visit a farm, you always make sure to stay aware of your surroundings and look to the person in charge. Farming is one of the best jobs out there, and any farmer is cooler than school. Please don't tell my teacher. <laughs> I hope you understand how important farmers are and how much they do for us to live our daily lives. In January, I missed school to attend the Grey Bruce Farmers Week in Elmwood, and that where I was lucky enough to find my new favorite hat that says, I farm, you eat. And I am here to uh, introduce Martha uh, McCleary. Mark Mc sorry, McCleary. <laughs> Just had a little bit of a brain fog there. Uh, Martha McCleary, as as you know from the other month when she was here to talk as the multilingual learner, um, um, uh, for, from her role as a multilingual learner, she's also our French as a second language um, lead, and she's here tonight because she was helping with concours earlier this year, and we had a wonderful. Um, we had a wonderful group of students, uh, a number of students presenting that night. I'm going to leave it to Martha to uh, explain a little bit about that and then also introduce our special guest who is going to be doing an impromptu uh, speech for you tonight and she'll explain what that means. Good evening. I'm thrilled to introduce Ashlyn Lance. She's a grade 10 student at JDS. And she's also the winner of Blue Water's impromptu speech competition, which means that she will advance to the provincial competition, which takes place at Glendon College um, on May the 6th. Um, a little bit about the impromptu competition. It's a little bit different because about 15 minutes ago, um, Ashlyn and I went into a room next door and I gave her this dice that she's, she's never seen before. She rolled this dice and she got this topic. It says, Quelle est l'histoire la plus effrayante que tu connais et explique pourquoi? So now she's going to explain to you the scariest story she knows and why. And then I'll ask her a couple of questions. Un film que j'ai regardé une fois qui était tellement effrayant s'appelle E.T. Ce film était tellement effrayant parce qu'il y avait beaucoup d'endroits dans le film où il y avait des surprises. Tu sais quand tu regardes les films et il y a la musique qui devient très bruyante et tu sais que quelque chose de mauvais va se passer mais tu ne sais pas quoi? Ça se passe beaucoup dans le film E.T. Par exemple, à une fois, il y avait un garçon qui dormait dehors. La musique devient bruyante mais on ne savait pas qu'est-ce qui se passe. Soudainement, il y avait un monstre qui, qui est venu et le garçon ne savait pas qu'est-ce que c'était. C'était pas un humain. Le garçon a essayé de d'échapper de cette monstre, mais il ne pouvait pas. Donc, comme spectateur, c'était tellement effrayant parce qu'on ne sait pas qu'est-ce qui va se passer à ce garçon. On ne sait pas qu'est-ce que le monstre va essayer de faire. Et le garçon avait beaucoup de difficultés de s'échapper du monstre. Quand j'ai regardé ce film, j'étais à la maison seule et j'étais dans la noirceur. Alors, c'était beaucoup plus effrayant. Parce que quand tu es dans la noirceur, c'est toujours plus effrayant. Donc, maintenant, quand je regarde les films, 
toute seule à la maison, je m'assure que c'est les siennes qui ne sont pas très effrayantes, parce que je, je le regrettais beaucoup quand j'ai regardé cette sienne dans la noirceur. À la fin de cette sienne, ça devenait beaucoup plus content et excitant parce que B.T., qui était en train de montrer, a devenu ami avec le garçon. Et ils ont parlé ensemble, ils ont mangé ensemble et joué ensemble. Mais au commencement de sienne, je pensais que ça, ça serait une sienne tellement effrayante. Merci. Je préfère les films un peu dramatiques parce que je sais qu'il ne, qu ne va pas y avoir d'horreur dans ces films et ces films sont beaucoup plus euh, drôles et il y a des endroits dans les films quand tu peux rire et c'est juste beaucoup plus content et excitant et la fin est toujours, um, la, la fin de la film est toujours uh, très amusant de voir qu'est-ce qui va se passer. Tu as un film préféré? Um, J'aime beaucoup de différents films. Um, je ne sais pas si j'ai un préféré. Um, actuellement, je dirais que E.T. est peut-être un de mes films préférés parce que je pensais que c'était effrayant au premier, la première fois que j'ai regardé, mais maintenant que je sais qu'est-ce qui se passe à la fin, je sais que c'est un film qui n'est pas très effrayant, alors c'est probablement un de mes films les plus préférés maintenant. So she makes the case that um, when you're in the dark, sometimes things are even scarier, but she still likes the film E.T. <laughs> I guess, would, do you have any questions? We could um, perhaps ask the, the students to come back up if you had anything. We'll let them like them back up and we'll see what the questions okay. are, but it also gives us an opportunity to thank them. Yeah. Do trustees have any questions or comments for our guests? Trustee Weeks.
So in grade four, you start writing speeches, and it's usually a must. However, this year it was optional. So I decided that I was still going to write a speech and present it because public speaking's always been a thing that I've loved to do before. So in previous years, I've done mine on Clydesdales, which is a horse, and then I did mine on how milk actually, what it is and how it gets to your fridge or table. But this year, it just kind of, I wanted to await, oh, oh my goodness, sorry, um, get more awareness for dairy farming and all types of farming. Um, so at my school, I was actually the only competitor in my category, and so I had a few practice um, pictures and these cu question cubes with the questions on them online that I would practice at home by myself and just go through the process of an impromptu speech, and then I came um, here to the board or yeah to the board level in March, and I performed my speech. Oh. Are you francophone, or do you come from a francophone family, or are you just French program? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a French immersion program at school, and I've been in French immersion since kindergarten, so I've had a lot of practice. Student trustee, he is was just for Holly. Has your friend heard the story about her? Yeah, she hasn't uh, she hasn't been able to come to any of them because switching between one parent to another, uh, she couldn't really make it to any of them. But at home I did make a video for her and sent it to her. <laughs> any other any other questions or comments? I also want to congratulate all of you that this is very difficult work that you just did to come up and speak before quite a number of people. Uh, all of your speeches were very engaging and I must say I am very envious of you for your French speaking ability. It makes me wish I had uh, learned better when I was in school. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much for coming to this evening. by Trustee Lutz and seconded by Trustee Price that the Blue Water District School Board received the oral communication report 2023 for information. All in favor? Thank you, that is carried. There are no delegations this evening. Um, <coughs> Uh, we have some recommendations coming from the Committee of the Whole Board from April 4th. Uh, I will be the mover on these motions and I'll be looking for a seconder. Uh, so first, that the Blue Water District School Board approve that Georgian Bay Community School students participate in the Outdoor Education Program Field Trips, EAD 20, Lake Eugenia, September 20th to 2023, EAD 20, Clay Banks, September 26th, 7th, 2023, and PAD 20, Killarney, October 5th, 1st to 5th, um, uh, 2023. Could I have a seconder, please? Trustee Morgan? Is there any further discussion on that motion? I see none. All in favor? Thank you. That is carried. Second is that the Blue Water District School Board approve the draft letter provided by the Special Education Advisory Committee regarding the SIP claim funding to send to the Minister of Education, Stephen Legend. Could I have a seconder, Trustee Atkinson? Any comment or Trustee Atkinson? Uh, Chair Thompson, I would like to bring it to the attention that there has been changes. So we would like to uh, send this back to SEAC. And I think not, uh, Superintendent McKeon will address this if anyone has questions. Thank you.
Chair Thompson, um, just to remind everyone, when we talk about SIP funding or Special Incident Portion funding, we are speaking about funding that is specific to support students with extraordinary high needs who require more than two uh, full-time staff uh, to address their health and or safety needs at school. Uh, the letter was written uh, and applies to the funding model that has been used previously, which was a claims-based model that looked at providing funding for individual students. Yesterday, in the release of the grant, grants for student needs, uh, there has been a change in how the SIP uh, funding will be allocated. It will be a baseline model uh, calculated using a formula. So I feel that uh, the letter that was previously written is no longer accurate um, and something that SEAC should review. Thank you. Any questions? Trustee Kaikon? So does that mean the letter is being withdrawn? Yes, they'll go back to the SEAC table. Um, and if edits or changes are requested, then it'll be. Just to clarify, we'll have to make an amendment to the letter, and yeah. then once that's voted on, Um, yeah, amendment to the motion. So I have a suggestion for trustees to consider. Um, the, and the, I'll, uh, I'll first tell you the uh, amendment and then we'll look for a seconder. That the Blue Water District School Board strike out, approve, and insert return the draft letter provided by the Special Education Advisory Committee regarding the SIP claim funding Two, strike out, send to the Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce, and insert SEAC for further review. I don't need to, is it clear the way I said it? Is there a seconder for that amendment? <coughs> Trustee Craig? Is there any discussion on the amendment that's on the floor? Is, go ahead. Someone on SEAC who was involved in that particular discussion. If we do proceed with any communication with the ministry or with the minister on the subject, I think our focus should be what it actually costs, how we estimate it actually costs to serve the needs of such children. Because we're not even convinced that the new funding formula um, for this purpose is going to be adequate to our needs. And we should always be telling them they're not doing this enough. I think the opportunity will be for SEAC to discuss all of the implications and decide what to do. If there's no further uh, discussion, is the, uh, the amendment um, approved? Is there approval for the amendment? So we are going to now approve the motion, which now reads that the Blue Water District School Board return the draft letter provided by the Special Education Advisory Committee regarding SIP claim funding to SEAC for further review. All in favor? None is carried. Thank you. And next. Uh, the that Blue Water District School Board approved Board Policy BE4106B, Advertising Expenditures as Revised for System Use. Could I have a seconder, please? Trustee McCollum? Any further discussion? All in favor? And next, that the Blue Water District School Board approve policy BP 252850D, distribution of religious belief materials as revised for system use. Could I have a seconder, please? Trustee Roots? Any further discussion? Trustee Kaikkonen? I have checked with several lawyers, and this, will, this policy will not hold up in the court of law as it is currently written. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed?
is our business committee of the whole board and I would like to invite Vice Chair Johnstone to speak to this report. Uh, she chairs the meeting that evening. Essentially, uh, the data will come back to us next year, so we're asking you to uh, find and approve the $11 million now, and we'll get the data next year. Is that how this works? Being a newbie, I just want to be sure.
I meant, I think we can draw it, that the Blue Water District School Board approved the sale of Georgian Bay Community School listed at 125 Eliza Street in the town of Meaford for the purchase price of $1,730,000 conditional on the approval of the Ministry of Education, second Trustee Morgan. All in favor? And that is carried and thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any new notice of motion this evening? Seeing none. So next, uh, we have a notice of motion brought forward by Trustee Long. Uh, the following, the first one, the following notice of motion was brought forward by Trustee Long at the March 21st, uh, 2023 regular meeting of the board for consideration and was postponed to April 18th, today regular meeting of the board. I will put this motion on the floor. Um, whereas, as a collective group, Blue Water District School Board trustees, along with senior management, are entrusted with an annual budget near one quarter of a billion dollars, with most of that budget being employee <coughs> salaries and hourly wages, and whereas transparency breeds collegiality and full awareness of critical knowledge and data. Therefore, be it resolved that the Director of Education give all trustees a thorough and current list of salaries and hourly, wage, hour, hourly wages for all bargaining groups, both unionized and non-unionized. A mover uh, is Trustee Long, and a seconder, Trustee Tyson. Trustee Long, would you like to speak to this first? Yes, I'm hoping to withdraw this motion, B3A, and replace it with notice of motion, B3B. That's my request. Perhaps I shouldn't have um, offered the motion. That's what I'm hoping to do. Withdraw this and replace it with B3B. So Trustee Long is asked to withdraw this motion. If there's no objection to that, uh, then the motion will be withdrawn from the floor and we'll look at the next one. Is there any objection? I see none. Thank you. So next, the following notice of motion was brought forward by Trustee Long at the March 21st, 2023 regular meeting of the board for consideration at the April 18th, 2023 regular meeting of the board and I will put the motion on the floor. Whereas this data is crucial for budget deliberations, therefore be it resolved that the chairperson with the director's assistance gather the current maximum salary and hourly rate for all employees groups, both salary and hourly, both union and non-union, bracket i.e. directors, superintendents, corporate services, top two, managers of custodial maintenance, at full OSSPF, EA, custodian, and ECE, closed bracket. Could I have a seconder, please? Trustee Tykenen and Trustee Long, would you like to speak to your motion? Let's go to the chair. I think it's valuable information for us all to have so that we can make the wisest decisions. Thank you. Any other trustees like to speak? Trustee Craig. Someone give me, or the director, or someone give me um, an overview of the information we currently receive um, that pertains to uh, this set of uh, salaries uh, and other important things. Um, the chair would like me to do that. Through the chair, uh, at our last business committee meeting, we had a good discussion about the role of the trustee in the budget development and the governance role. Uh, at that meeting, we also talked about the GSN uh, due to its prescriptive nature in the funding uh, and the budget development of the school board. Uh, so while it's true that much of our uh, 
expenses are in salaries, it's also true that much of that is prescribed by the Ministry of Education. Uh, at that meeting, we went through a number of different items in the grants for student needs. Um, and we tried to summarize that at the end uh, with a summary, if you recall, of the top of the uh, <coughs> sum of the salaries by different grant, if we could. Uh, so that was provided at that meeting. Again, I will remind the trustees, your role as a governing body is, you know, 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet, making sure we're traveling in the, in the appropriate direction. Um, that kind of goes hand in hand with the ministry direction in terms of the prescriptive nature of the, of the GSM. But you did receive a good summary at the last meeting. I saw some other hands. Trustee. Thank you very much. So, personally, anytime I have been through the budgeting process, I have seen no need to have this information. It does not seem to be um, required. And the thing is, is that as trustees, we have no role in hiring except for the director. We have no role in staffing, and the government cuts the staff to student ratio. So, actually, specific salary data would not be of any value to us in our role in budgeting. So, in my opinion, the only reason to publicize it, including at these meetings, would be for shame and manipulation, either of what happens within our. Oh, Thank you. So, yeah, it's, we have no role, so we don't need it. Thank you. And a reminder to all of us to keep our comments uh, respectful. Uh, Trustee Martin. Um, to piggyback on Trustee uh, Lou's comment, Madam Chair, all of the salaries most of the salaries are uh, union based. They are set. We have no control over them, nor do we have, um, I think, the right to individually look at each person on the board. It's redundant. Thank you. Trustee Cousin. A number of comments. Given that our budget is between 250 and 265 million, I can't keep up. I think it's important, and I don't think it's about shame and manipulation. I think it's important about being good stewards of the money that is uh, given to our board and for funding these kinds of positions. But as we just passed the right of homes, uh, we talked about spending another 11 million dollars, and yet we don't have the data to go along with it to hire more employees. So if we can't figure out why we're spending so much now, why would we want to spend another $11 million to get more employees when we have absolutely no data that says that our kids or our students are being educated in reading, writing, and math, and that they are improving over the provincial standardized test. So I think there's a lot of things that go into this uh, motion. I don't believe that uh, uh, hiding our head in the sand is, is the way to go. I believe it's a fair question. We need to know where the money is being spent. And I don't think it's unfair to ask what the wages are. If we want to go look up employee by employee, we just go to the sunshine list and everybody's there. So I think overall, it's not unfair to ask for wages given the size of budget that we have for Blue Water District School Board. Remember, this money hand that feeds us is the taxpayers. Thank you. Any other trustees who have not had an opportunity to speak wish to speak?
you. I'm, I will go back to you, but I'll just see if anyone else had a comment before. I don't see any. Go ahead. I love the speeches tonight. The young lady that let us have a glimpse into a small business of farming took us, took us to school. That was really delightful. All of them, all done. I think a, a young farmer would, if they were spending $250 million on feed, they might want to know uh, what the prices of the, the bag for feed are. They might want to know uh, how much is going into grain and how much is going into wheat. My request is twofold, it's very simple. Quarter billion dollar budget. I just like to know how much is in this envelope called DTFO, how much is in that envelope called senior admin, and for each of the envelopes, what's the equivalent of an A4 box? It's a very simple request. Can't do any harm at all. And again, thank you, young lady, for taking us to school. Um, we did get the envelopes for the different groups, did we not? Superintendent Cummings? Through the chair, yes, that was part of the presentation on the phone. Second or fifth, I think. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, Trustee Pecanin. Maybe I should point out part of our envelope presentation was that the board spent $16.1 the trustees spent 0.1% if I have that right. And that was one of the envelopes that was presented. I think the public at large was asking the question, what is it that the board is spending for 16.1 minus the 0.1% that the trustees actually get? I am going to call the question because we've had an opportunity for people to speak. Um, so all in favor of the motion? And opposed? And it is defeated. There are no committee establishments or appointments this evening. And the Student Senate Report, I would like to invite Ro Rose Kiwakishi to present the report this evening. Senators for the Blue Water District School Board met on Tuesday, April 11, 2023. Michael Craig, the trustee representing Owen Sound, sat with down with us today and heard our concerns about our schools and helped brainstorm solutions on how we can take career action, actions on them. Some of our school updates is that our Indigenous Student Forum is taking place on May 4, 2023, where Indigenous students are welcome to have their voices heard and participate in discussions. Similarly, the Rainbow Forum is also in motion, giving that same atmosphere, but for the LGBTQ students that participate and discuss their own specific issues and concerns. A special thank you to Trustee Thompson for attending the student art show that was put on by one of our student senators from PS PSBS that had place last weekend. Within our schools, new murals were painted at PBSS that was painted at the end of the week from the drama program. KDSS, St. Mary's, OD, ODSS are all having a go dance for their students. Furthermore, KDSS has hosted the, I'm going to mess this um, saying up, but the I, IFTA, IFTA dinner, dinner, dinner for the Ramadan, for those who are fasting, praying, and reflecting at this time. That was held on April 13, 2023. Excitingly enough, grade 12 nominations for valedictorians are open and will be running to give this speech to their graduating class. A big congratulations to JDSS, boys hockey team, as they went to Ottawa for their season. JDSS also will be participating in their production of the musical Last Girl this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week. Lastly, students are buckling down on student <coughs> on studies as literacy tests are coming around the corner 
along with midterm reports rolling out in the next couple of weeks. For environmental incentives, they are on our way. The challenge for all the schools have been sent out to every school on the board to enter their program practices and clubs for a chance to win $200 towards funding more activities to help the environment. This Saturday is Earth Day, and we currently have 30 entries across the school board right now. But that's it for my presentation. Thank you. Do trustees have any questions or comments for a student trustee Houston Chief? <coughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Trustee Craig. This year, we've had the pleasure of working with Carla in schools uh, with principals and students doing math. So I'm going to turn it over to Carla. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Here we go. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to be here tonight to provide some information about mathematics and Blue Water District School Board. Tonight, we'll do uh, three things. Um, we'll review the K-12 math goal, hopefully we'll do some math, um, and we'll take a look at Math Up Classroom as well as Math Up School, which are key resources for instructional leadership and effective learning and teaching in mathematics and blue water. Blue Water District School Board's K-12 mathematics goal is in inclusive learning environments, all students will develop increased number sense, to be flexible and adaptive learners and problem solvers. On the slide is a sample of some of the environmental evidence, educator moves, and student work related to the math goal. So environmental evidence are some of the visual supports that we would we like to see on walls and boards in classrooms. An example of environmental evidence could be an anchor chart, um, that shows maybe the different means of subtraction. Educator moves are the things that educators are doing throughout a math lesson. An educator might do a thing aloud to model problem solving for a student. Another example is the use of open and parallel uh, questions so all students have an entry point to access the mathematics. 
Student work is the ultimate measure of a goal being met. Look for and include evidence of models in student work, using an appropriate tool or applying an appropriate model when solving a problem, and improved number sense. So Map Up Classroom is a curriculum-based resource that's been provided to all educators in Blue Water from kindergarten to grade nine. So including the new D-Stream um, Map uh, course, the, um, the classes have access to a uh, curriculum-based uh, resource called Map Up Classroom. This resource provides both professional learning for educators as well as student-facing materials. On the previous slide, uh, daily number work or number routines were mentioned as an instructional practice to develop students' flexibility with number. A number routine is a daily opportunity for students to play with numbers, talk about numbers, and have fun with numbers. It's a great way to revisit uh, key number skills and concepts on a daily basis. <coughs> so, let's do some math, or let, at least let's think about some math. For tonight, I selected a grade six number talk for Math Up Classroom. It's called a division picture. So in a classroom, in a grade six classroom, um, a teacher would project the problem for the students to think about and to solve. So the question is, the model represents a four digit number divided by a three or four digit number. What might the numbers be? So take a minute, think about how you might approach this problem. The problem is presented using a parts whole box. And a parts whole box is showing the whole number at the top in the large rectangle. And in this case, since it's division, it's showing four equal parts and a remainder. So my question is, and you don't have, you don't have to answer, just kind of a nod would be fine. Did you start with the whole and then determine the equal parts and the remainder? Or did you start with the parts to determine the whole? As students share their solutions in the class, the teacher will represent their thinking visually in, and symbolically. So making the connection between the models and the numbers. The visual representation might be the parts whole box or it might be an open number line. The parts whole box is a great visual um, because in this question, it's, showing the show, it's used to show the understanding of what division, <coughs> particularly division involving remainder speeds. So that's an example of a number talk. Uh, it's an example of a number talk from Math Up Classroom. Math Up Classroom is a resource used by students and teachers. Math Up School is a school improvement resource. Every school in Blue Water has a Math Up School license and can assign two collaborators. So the principal has access to it, and in a larger school, the vice principal might have access to it, or the principal might have a, a, somebody that has a keen interest in math, and they can be assigned as a collaborator. Doug Duff is the developer of this resource. It's a systematic approach that builds common board and school-wide language, understanding, and instructional focus. It's the key to co coherence across the board and across the classrooms in schools. For example, so when students move from grade to grade, there is a consistency in the focus and in the language. Doug Duff, as I said, is the developer of this resource. He's worked with various students teachers, and administrators in Blue Water over the past four years. This year, as Lauren mentioned, the work is in uh, schools. Doug, the area superintendent, myself, and sometimes a math coach, visits various schools across the three areas to engage in mathematics learning with the administrators, the teachers, and students. The work of these schools is driven by where the school is in the school improvement cycle. The school improvement cycle is the visual on that slide. In many schools, I'm just going to describe kind of a focus day school. Uh, in many schools, the day would start with a professional learning workshop with teachers. This is followed by the teacher, or the teachers, the administrator, the superintendent, uh, and Doug Duff going into classrooms in the schools to model the learning directly to students. The focus school model has been positive learning experience. Um, the learning for the administrators provides increased content knowledge in math to inform monitoring. The teachers gain valuable professional learning in their, in their class with their students, 
and the students are excited about the math they're engaging with. So the last thing uh, we wanted to share about mathematics and blue water tonight is an update about instructional coaching that is happening to support effective learning and teaching. At a previous board meeting, uh, Wendy Lowers, who was here earlier, uh, provided an overview of the coaching model that's being used to support reading and math. At that time, she shared the quote that I've, I've also put in the top right hand corner of the slide, which highlights coaching as an effective way to change classroom instruction. On the slide, I wanted to provide a few images from our math coaches who are supporting mathematics through a school-based job embedded coaching model. Many schools receive coaching support for primary and junior mathematics, and all schools with grades seven to 12 are supported by an instructional coach. The, so if you look at the grade one example, um, it, the, the students are working on 10 pairs, and 10 pairs are a key marker in early primary. So the ability for students to understand that uh, quick, with some automaticity, that three plus seven is 10, and seven plus three is 10, and 10, ten subtract three is seven, 10 subtract seven is three. I think I got all my pairs right. <laughs> uh, so that's the one that's being shown in the, uh, the left-hand side. Uh, they're building it with a uh, Cuisinier rod, and then they are uh, transferring it to uh, a symbolic um, model. Um, to show the connection between the concrete material as well as the, the model and the numbers. Uh, the dice example in the middle is a number talk where a student described their solution and the coach made their thinking visible using a number line. And the final image is something that's, uh, it's called decomposition. And it's a really interesting way for students to build an understanding of division. So, and division is a mathematical concept that may be challenging for some students. So this gives another approach, another way of looking at division. And in, in this example, the students were asked to divide 44 by 3. And so what they did is they decomposed, broke the number apart, so that 44 became 30 plus 12 plus 2. And then they were able to do the 30 divided by 3, is 10, the 12 divided by 3 is 4, and then there was two thirds left over. So by decomposing the 44 divided by 3, they could then put that together and come up with the answer of 14 and two thirds. And the final box on the slide, uh, in the bottom left hand corner, is a quote from a teacher indicating a change in classroom instruction which resulted in what we want, what we want is improved student learning. So Lauren, I think that's what I have. And I think I have, if there's any questions, we'll take them. Do trustee teams have any questions? Trustee Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, very interesting presentation. Can you tell me how you would apply the first question that you had with the bar and the four? How you would apply that if you were working in the trades on a daily basis yeah. or um, a farmer, for instance. Yeah, yeah I, could, I could talk about the trade one. I might have to think, be a little more creative to think about the farming um, example. Uh, a parts whole model or uh, open number line is a linear model. And a linear model lends itself really nicely to measurement. So anytime that um, we're seeing like jumps you can picture jumps on a, on a number line, but you can also picture jumps on a tape measure or, t or, or on a, um, a measuring tape. So what, what those models are really doing is getting students to think about a linear way of measuring. Sorry about yeah. the farming one. No, and, and I think um, part of your question, I know what you're getting at, uh, Trustee Warren, I think from some of your other comments and questions, part of it is helping students first to visualize what's the whole and what are the parts that make that whole so that I can understand the whole number. Um, you know, a number 10 might be sim simple to understand or 20 or 30, but when I'm looking at 37 or 57, that's a little more complex to think about. How do I break that apart? Can I break it apart evenly? So what are the, in other words, what are the multiples? How would I divide it? 
So a parts wall box might be where we start to help kids visualize, here's the hole on the top, that long linear box, and that could be anything, 57, 45, 30. What are the parts? If I was gonna divide this, divide it by three or four or two. And when students can start to visualize that way, they deepen their understanding of number. And our goal is to get to that automatic division or automatic multiplication. That is the goal. And, and so students, um, students are still then transferring that to an algorithm or the division sign, the multiplication sign. That's where we're heading. But if, if students can visualize first and see the parts and see how numbers work together, see multiples and how they relate, um, the research would tell us they have a good, solid understanding of number, not just memorizing um, a formula. We want them to get to the formula so that they, they have automaticity. So a couple things come to mind. Thanks for the question. Um, the one thing uh, Math Hub has built in section called Your Turn. So what the Your Turn section is is deliberate practice. Uh, the, the other thing, um, Marion Small is is a developer of Math Hub, and I've been in a session with Marion, and she will say that it's, it's not a complete program. That's why we really rely on daily number routines as a way to practice that repetition, those, those irrevisible skills that need to be revisited. Um, also, uh, going back to Math Up, uh, there's also a, an ability to share the content with a, give a link. So teachers can um, share a link with uh, parents for uh, at home support. There's also, there's also in Math Up the ability to, um, to print some uh, what, for lack of a better term, paper copies or worksheets where, where students can practice. But as, uh, as Carla was mentioning, Math Up is really about introducing concepts, understanding concepts, and then decide how much practice is needed. If, if students need more practice, we need to give them more chance to practice. If, if you do, you know, a couple lessons and, and students are demonstrating that they've got the learning, we don't, you know, they don't need to do more practice. So that's where the teacher would gauge where are they at with the learning and then how much extra practice do we need to give them, whether that's in the classroom worksheets or, you know, um, repetition or printing off some of the materials that are available in the math up, or is that sending home something extra for that student to continue practicing? Trustee Atkinson? Just a comment. Over the last eight months of school year, every morning when I walk into a classroom, I see a math question on, on the whiteboard, and I stand and I think, okay, how are they doing this? Well, just last week, a little fellow sh showed me how to do the decompose <laughs> method, and I'm thinking, oh boy. But they were excited to do math, and it was really refreshing to see the enthusiasm that both the teacher and the student had to teach this, and I was welcome back for so I needed help. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Michael. In the report, thank you for the report too. In the report it just says, you know, and or paragraph one, two, three, four, I'm sorry. The letter is currently investigating various ways the district of schools to ensure the school awards with the direction of mathematics <coughs> and affordable meeting requirements outlined by the ministry. Is there not a standard digital tool in this program? No, there's not a standard digital tool provided by the ministry. However, the ministry um, has some tools that they have recommended um, that we can choose from. So um, we are looking at a tool called Knowledge Hook, 
and it is a it's an online digital tool that would support math ops. So it has some of the repetition and practice that Trustee Roots would was um, asking about. So it would complement nicely with with the program we have, and then this tool and there's funding uh, provided by the ministry for that tool. But there's not one standard tool. Boards do have some choice. Any other questions or comments? Trustee Craig. I'm curious about the challenge for all of us, for students as well, to uh, do arithmetic in our heads. Um, and I'm wondering whether math up is helpful in that regard. I'll give you an example from just last week. I gave a young woman, uh, a retail person, uh, a $20 bill to pay 17 and let's say 35 cents for something. And of course I was expecting change. But then I said, well, let me give you uh, this, uh, let's say, say it was 30, 32. Okay. I gave her a little bit more yeah. in, in change to cover the, the cents that were involved. And therefore I was expecting her to give me back three dollars and whatever. She simply went to a calculator to figure it out. And I'm wondering if that is a common reality uh, of young people these days, that uh, they don't do math in their heads to figure something out like that. I was busy figuring out in my head as I gave her the, the cash. Um, but the calculator was her solution. So does math help? Math up help with that? Yeah, for each uh, for each grade, there is a uh, mental math specific expectation, and math up addresses the mental math uh, expectation. But again, as Lauren mentioned, sometimes we need extra practice, and we might go outside of math up and go to another reputable source or use a number talk that relies more on mental math as opposed to on uh, using uh, paper and pencil. So, so yet yeah, it does. Is it enough? Often teachers find that they then go and they'll find a, an extra practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other comments or questions? Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate the uh, information you provided tonight. I'm still a little lost on the <laughs> number we'll one there, but we'll can bring bring that back to you so you can actually do the math. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was moved by Trustee Morgan and seconded by Trustee McComb that the Blue Water District School Board receive the mathematics and Blue Water District School Board report for information. All in favor? That is carried. Uh, communications and correspondence. Uh, you will have received uh, the correspondence from the Better Schools and Students Outcomes Act 2023 um, and the other memos are has tabled, but the government has tabled the other memo. And Better Outcomes for Students. So one is our GSM and one is legislation that the government is considering and if you look at the different um, the differences, it will tell you that some need consultation. Uh, it will let you know that consultation did not occur in what you have received. So you will be hearing, uh, I assume, a lot from OPSPA and uh, on the media um, in the next coming bit. But I assume that the GSM announcement is happy news for our business services department as they can start to work officially on the budget with the, the actual dollars and cents that they have to work with. Uh, so they are both there for your information. Uh, D2, communications and announcements, and I know we have something from Trustee Tyson. Trustees of the Get Real workshops yesterday 
April 17, 2023. She tell us yesterday what had already been planned and scheduled. So my question, because I have lots of them, was it an afterthought for the trustees to even be notified? Were you concerned when parents and guardians started pushing back? Did you think it was fair to any trustee at this table to be informed after parents started screaming at us? For me personally, I just got off the plane from Winnipeg after an intense week of National Citizens Inquiry testimony to find out I'd been inundated from calls from parents. Inundated. How is that fair to any trustee? I can't even give a board answer because Get Real was never discussed at any board group meeting. There were no communications. Did no one at the board think trustees should be given a heads up? particularly when this issue is being raised at school board meetings all across the province for this very same issue. And further to this point, the board informed trustees after I presume all the third party contracts were signed and all the I's dotted and T's crossed in terms of policies. Yes, that was a question. But then when I suggest to parents that this was a board decision, I'm told we didn't elect the board. We elected you as a trustee. And yet I was never given a response from the board. No communications whatsoever before yesterday. And that wasn't even a communication, that was simply an email. So is there a board response? And will trustees be consulted for input? And what will this board tell parents and guardians who have now poked parents and who are not happy? What about the people peacefully demonstrating who were apparently assaulted? Did it occur in school property? Did we have security on site or a police presence? Obviously the board knew there were issues and to try to cover it up by sending an email to trustees after the fact. But that is not good enough. My other concern is this attempt to separate procedural powers, as in did the principals approve these get real workshops, from policy powers, as in our strategic mission is this. The board is all in for DOT. This, that's the acronym that is the inclusion in equity. This begs a couple of questions. What is the school board's liability? If it's a procedural decision, does that make the board liable if the procedural decision is made by an outsider? What is the liability consequence for the board? Again, as a trustee, I'm trying to do what's right here, but I'm getting inundated with calls from parents. So how am I supposed to respond? Am I supposed to tell them that this is only procedural and we, the trustees, only deal with policy? Seriously? Someone has set the Get Real workshops in motion. So now that blue water is on the map, is the school board going to send a communication to parents? And will the trustees receive a copy at any point? Will we have input to the communication beforehand? Or will it be like the correspondence we already do not receive from parents and guardians that sent to the board and we never receive it? Believe me, I'm trying to act as a contributing member of this board, but I feel it's very unfair that we were sent an email after Get Real had already been arranged. How am I to, and I will finish with this comment, how am I to defend the board telling parents we are trying to be transparent when the board has the responsibility to ensure everyone was informed and that they had choices, including opting out? Finally, as a board, we have a responsibility to anticipate what is becoming a concern within our school community. That's why the people in this room, I assume, are paid the big bucks. I believe the people of this community deserve answers. Thank you. I would remind the audience that you're here as observers. And Director Wilder, would you like to speak to this? I, I can start. Um, this is not something that would come to the Board of Trustees as a decision. This is an operational programming uh, decision. And our superintendents and principals do this all the time. And it does not come before us. When it became apparent that some people had concerns, I talked with Director Wilder and asked, and we sent out the notification so all trustees had accurate information and were able to uh, inform the director or the superintendent or the principal in their area if there were concerns that had come forward, as is our process through our communication protocol. But I will let Director Wilder speak to this. Um, parents, uh, again, principals do have the autonomy in their schools, and we, we value that. We honor their professional judgment. So they have the autonomy to bring in presentations, any kind of assemblies, whether it's um, Get Real, whether it's Jump Rope for Heart, or Cost for Cancer, or whatever fits their school community and that they feel is necessary. So we are very supportive of that. It is procedural 
in nature. Um, parents in the school did receive communications beforehand um, through via different methods, so parents were aware. I know that there um, were some calls and principals handled those calls effectively. Get Real, um, again, is a Canadian organization combating anti to SLGBTQ plus discrimination, racism, and bullying in our schools, and have aimed to break down prejudice, promote unity, and foster compassion in our world. How can we not support that? As That's well, all our presentations in the board align with the Ontario curriculum and our board's policies and procedures, including equity, inclusive education, Ontario human rights, and our strategic plan priority, supporting a safe, accepting, and caring environment. We are most supportive of the presentations that have occurred. Trustees have any other comments? Trustee Long? Through the chair, I, I think uh, Trustee Kaikinen's uh, point is well taken that maybe in the future uh, an initiative, initiative uh, like this might be mentioned, for example, in, uh, in Jamie Pettit's uh, news releases or whatever we'll, we'll call. Well, maybe it was mentioned some time ago when I just uh, missed it. Um, but yeah, just realizing that it was, uh, sounds like it was already made known to some of us in the last two or three days, unless it was uh, posted elsewhere and I missed it. But uh, it's, I, I just like the idea of being uh, communicative and uh, letting us know stuff uh, in, the, in as far advance as possible. Thank you. Trustee Lutz. Thank you. So, I think of all the schools that I represent as trustee and the many, many assemblies they have, either internal presentations or with external groups. And I have, there has never been a need to know about all of them. And because again, I, I trust the administrators as a parent, I trust the administrators to have good presentations, and I am often lucky enough to be invited to the incredible presentations in our schools, and I have always found them enlightening, educating, and very exciting to be a part of. And so this, yeah, this, it would be a huge administrative burden for our principals and vice principals to be bringing every um, event up the chain to our community. Trustee, or Vice Chair Johnston. Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I just want to say about this is that um, this, this particular organization presented to all our schools last year without any incident. There was no reason why we would think that this year would be any, anything different. Um, as a school trustee, I, um, I attend school council meetings, so I'm quite aware that they, they are going to be presenting in um, my area, um, and so that, and so parents were there, and they, they talked about that. And also it was uh, put out um, by school newsletters, which I also asked my principal to, to send me in advance. So I don't, you know, it's, I believe it's part of my duty to, you know, be connected with my school community. I would really strongly suggest that all trustees here um, would also um, want to do that so that you can be engaged with your local community. And I don't see any problem with this whatsoever, and it's a great organization that I plan to attend. Thank you. Trustee Peckelman. I guess the parents have a different perspective. I'm just gonna read the one paragraph here in the email that we got. It was an attachment to the email. We are aware of videos and comment threads circulating on social media that are inaccurately depicting the nature of these presentations. While we always take the concerns of parents and the public seriously, we find these comments to be objectionable and misinformed. We strongly encourage parents, guardians, and community members to visit Get Real website so they can be properly informed. Sounds like a re-education camp. If the parents have a concern in our Blue Water District School Board area, then I think that we need to listen to what the parents are saying. If we're going to be inclusive and, and diverse, 
and accepting all opinions, that should include those that are of the parent. In terms of uh, prior notice, I didn't get it. I got it yesterday, this email that says this is happening, but it didn't matter because I got Malcolm saying and saw all the phone calls that had <coughs> So I think we really need to reconsider what it is, and we need to put an opt-out, give, give these kinds of things in advance, and an opt-out for parents as we do in other things like the sex education program. Thank you. I hope Trustee Kaikkonen and all of the trustees, when you receive a concern from a parent regarding an issue at a school, the first thing you do is forward that email and the, that concerned parent back to the school to have a conversation with their teacher and or their principal, and if that's not resolved, it would be discussed with their superintendent. This is not an issue that a trustee resolves because this is something that's happening at the school level and we go back to the local level. Doing so, you allow the administration to know that a concern exists and not doing so doesn't share that information and that is part of our policy. Um, so I just, and that's, that's how we got to know there were concerns because the trustee did share those concerns and uh, let us know that we had an issue and that's when out of uh, respect for all of you, the information was shared because we realized you may be hearing something and it was important to have the information. I support this organization. I support any initiative of this board. In fact, I am proud of the initiatives of this board um, that are designed to fight racism, fight homophobia, fight sexism. Uh, because these kinds of attitudes within our society are a scourge. And they really must be actively um, fought. Um, same time, we have to calmly and rationally address the point that was made by Trustee Kaikunen that people who have these views that we disapprove of, and I really do disapprove of them, um, have to be met with respect and, uh, and rational uh, debate. Um, we can't push them away, but at the same time, we should not as a board be spending a lot of time on these kinds of culture war issues. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Trustee Craig, and I would say that um, as Chair uh, Thompson had alluded to, a trustee had alerted us to some concerns and there was good follow-up that had occurred, whether it be through the principal and or um, because a trustee directed it appropriately. Uh, as well, I know that um, uh, two of our superintendents spent some time talking with a concerned uh, community member today. Uh, so I think that respectfully, the, the ones that have come forward have been dealt with in that way. I'll give you one more comment and then we're going to move on. I won't take that comment that I just received as an aside. I will take it as an aside. I just want to reiterate my initial comment when I started this. I too want everyone to feel safe and nurtured in a welcoming and protected environment too. This is not lost on me and I do realize there is a process. But when that number of parents raise concerns, they have a voice as well. They have a diverse voice and they have a right to be heard if we're going to consider inclusivity, inclusivity as being 100% of the voices that contribute both in their tax dollars and with their students, with their children, to this Blue Water District School Board. Thank you. And again, I would encourage everyone to make sure that people are aware in the administration if you are receiving concerns. Uh, are there any, uh, or did you have any announcements, Christine, on this comment?
how do we go about that? Um, and then, um, so I just wanted to, you know, say say that, and also that Ottawa is obviously going to have a response from the latest, um, whether it's the CSN or whether it's um, the uh, latest legislation, they will be, you know, working on that, and I will keep you abreast as soon as I also am aware. Um, and if you're going to go to D3, So in, in terms of conferences, there's a labor symposium next weekend, and then following that, there is the AJM, which is in um, Blue Mountain, coming up in, in June, and um, that, and that, uh, that off the for time. So thank you very much. Trustee Long. Through the chair, do you see the opportunities are available on the OSPA site? Thank you. 